All right, so today's video, we're going to be building off of the previous video, linked to up at the top there, as well as down in the description, where we were talking about the file and file list objects. This video, we're going to do a quick little summary of how you can take files and then send them to the server. So if you've got an API or a web page and you need to upload this file that you've picked from the form, how do you do that? So I took the starter code from last time and I've just removed the extra three buttons and I've commented out the three listeners for those things. So right now, all the code is doing is if I click my button to select, I can pick one or two files. When I select that and I open it, it's just going to write out the information. So this is the file that I picked. There's the name, the size and bytes, the content type, and the timestamp for when that file was created. So that information is being written out for us. And we can see here, here's our file list object with the file object inside of it that had all that information. So what we want to do is we want to take this file and actually upload it. So I'm going to take the same function that I was calling here, this file picked, when we have a change event happening to the input element on the page. So that's this input file. If we look inside of our page, here's the input type equals file. Its ID is input file. We're allowing multiple files and I'm going to accept only JSON files for the time being. So those are the only kinds of files that I'm going to allow. When the change event fires, it means the user has used the file picker. They've selected one or more files and this function right here is going to run. We get our files object coming back. That's the one that we looked at right here. And I'm calling the next function show file info to write this stuff out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, I've picked an endpoint that I know exists. I'm going to send the files there. They're not going to accept the file. They're just going to say, hey, no, 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 we're going to abort this. We don't want files uploaded to us. So I'm going to get an abort message coming back, but that's fine. If I had a working endpoint, which this tutorial is not about, but if I had a web server with an API running somewhere I could send the file to, I'd get a, a good response back. So we're going to take this URL and what we want to do is we're going to make a fetch call. We want to send a request object. So let's create a new request object here. And the request object takes a couple of things. It's going to take a URL and an init object. The init object has a few things inside of it. Body. This is one of the most important ones. This is what's going to actually hold the one or more files that we upload. So I'm going to start with just one file. If I'm all I'm uploading is one single file, I can just do this. I can say in my files object here, my files list object, this one, I'm going to take number zero, this file object, and that's the thing that I'm going to upload. So there it is. That's what I'm going to upload. Now to do this properly, I should have some headers. So I will create a variable called H and that's going to be new headers object. And then the headers that I want to set inside of here, um, I'm going to want to put this type and this size, these two things, I want to put those in the headers. So when the file is received on the other end, that information is there in the headers to use in the code. So we're going to say H append and content type and content length. Those are the two headers that we want. So files number zero dot size. That's going to give us the size in bytes and files sub zero, the first file inside the array dot type. Those are the properties that we've got right here. So this is type application slash JSON. That's there. Now I could put a string in here that says application slash JSON, but it's just it's going to be better if I select the type from the actual file object itself. That way, this is going to be flexible. It's going to work for any types of files that I'm picking. Files size um, will give me the bytes here. So I can't hard code that because I don't know what size the file is going to be. All right, so we have our headers. Those two are set and we've got the body, which is set. And then anytime you are uploading a file, we can't leave it the default. The default is the get method. The get method does not allow us to include a body. So we're going to say the method is going to be post. Could be patch, could be put, could be post. Um, but regardless, 
it's got to be one of those something other than the default get. All right, so there we have it. We have our request object. Now we can do the fetch with our request object. And when it's given us back a response, I'm just going to write something out. So I'll say console.log response.status. That'll give me the status code, the HTTP status code. And the status text will give me that message. And if there's an error, which there is going to be an error, we can say in here, we'll just pass it over to console.warn. So we'll see our error message coming up. All right, so let's try this out. Select one file. There we go, 201. So this one file was accepted. So because we uploaded a JSON file, that is one of the few allowed types. If I had uploaded an image to JSON placeholder, it would be giving me a reject and abort message of 520, I believe is the HTTP status code for that. But JSON file, it's a plain text file or basically a plain text file. So it's allowed to go through. Our upload worked. Okay, so that's great for one. But what if you have additional data? What if you have additional files? If I've got multiple files that I'm uploading and sending, if that is the case, then we have to change this a little bit. We can't set the headers because what we're doing is we're sending a whole bunch of separate things. What the browser is actually going to do is it wants to say, okay, there's one file, two files, three files. Oh, and there's some form data as well. We've got uh, a couple of text fields, maybe, uh, a text area, a select, input type equals URL, all these different things. So we've got all these different parts and they're going to be divided up into chunks. And what we're going to see is there's going to be a header set called content disposition. And this is happening behind the scenes. We don't have to do anything for this. If I could spell disposition, there we go, content disposition. And the value for this is going to be multi-part slash form data. This right here is the browser telling the server what I'm sending you is broken up into a bunch of chunks. Between each one of the chunks, there has to be some sort of divider. There has to be some way for the server to know, okay, this is the end of the first chunk. I'm moving on to the second. The end of the first file, here's the second file. The end of the first text field, here's the second text field. Here's the next one. So semicolon, after that, we have to define the boundary. Now this is the piece of text that the browser is going to insert between each of these parts. And it's just something called boundary. It's gonna be equal to a string, starts with two hyphens, and then just some random text. You can make that anything you want. But this header right here is gonna be created by the browser. We're not allowed to set content disposition ourselves in JavaScript, it's not allowed. But if I do this, if I say new form data, and then I change the body from being that single file to saying, hey, there's a form data object. Now, because of this form data, the request is automatically going to include this header. We don't set it, the browser sets it. But as soon as you say, hey, I've got multi-part form data that I'm putting in there, then the browser will create this thing and it will invent a boundary for you. Okay, in my form data, I'm gonna append uh, and we can see here with our little code complete helping, name and value. These are the two things that you absolutely have to have for each one of the form data entries. This would be like the name of your form field and this is the value inside the form field. So I could say name Steve. There we go, I've just added something into my form data object. Now what I wanna do is I wanna add those files that we were talking about before. So we'll just do a loop. We'll say for let i, and we'll create a variable called len, which is files.length. As long as i is less than len, keep incrementing. So we'll keep looping through here. And each time we loop through, we're going to call the append method. And we can call this anything we want. You know, I could call it files. 
images, whatever you want to call it. So it's, it's a label. And if you want, you could include this number as part of it. If you're going to be looking for things on the server that start with this. So if I did a template string, we could inject this inside there. So files dash zero, files dash one, files dash two. Those are going to be the names. Again, you can use any string you want as the name. This is the name of the form field, if you will, that's holding this file. The value, well, inside of here, um, name and value for the first one, you can see they're both strings. An optional value for this, instead of a string, you can put a blob, which stands for binary large object. A blob is basically a file. So a file is a subclass of blob. So I can say inside of here, files sub i. There it is. That is the actual file object. And we can see up here, blob. String or blob, we can have either one. I'm putting a blob, I'm putting the actual file into my form data entry. And then there's an optional field at the end, which is the file name. So I can create my own file name if I want, something like this, or I can take whatever the file was called on the operating system. So this dot name, just like what we've written here. Just bear in mind that you never want to trust user input. If it's coming from the browser on the server side, you absolutely have to do validation. You want to make sure that you've got an accurate content type. You want to make sure that the name is not filled with special characters or something that's going to mess up your um, file system. So validate this when it gets to the server. For now, we're just talking about how to upload it. So I'm looping through, I'm appending all the files that I've attached. And now the body is my form data object, which has this name value pair plus all the files. Headers, I'm not creating those anymore. I don't need this because the header that I needed, this content disposition, is going to be created by the browser because I'm putting a form data object here. Method, still post. All right, so I'll save that. Come back in here. We're going to select multiple files. So I'll take both the JSON files, click open. There we go. So we're uploading multiple files. And now here we're getting that uh, message 503. I'm not allowed to do that. I cannot upload multiple files. Now the error message that's written here talks about cores. It's a cores issue. Yes, um, I'm uploading something. I'm getting something back from the server that says, hey, you're not allowed to, to do this. Um, the access control allow origin header is either not there or it's got a value that doesn't match my domain, my origin. So we can inside of here, just to make this message disappear, we can set mode to no dash cores. And that is going to tell the browser that I'm sending something up to the server. I'm going to get a response back that I'm not allowed to use, but that's okay. I don't care. I only wanted to upload the files. That's the only thing I care about. So here we go. I'm going to take both the JSON files. Boom. There we go. And aborted 503. That's fine, but at least it got up there. I'm not getting that cores message because I don't care about the response. All I wanted to do was upload my files. And we can actually, if we open this up a little bit, over to the network tab down here. Here's the failed one at the bottom. If we look inside the headers, so method post, that's the one that we set. And down here below all the response headers, the stuff that says, Hey, you're not allowed to use this. There's my request headers. Payload. This is what we uploaded. Form data name, Steve. That's what we put right here. And then files dash zero files dash one. Those are the two names we created here and binary. Those are the actual things that we're uploading. And this is what I was talking about with that boundary being created for us. So that dash dash webkit dash dash webkit boundary. So this is what's being sent to the server. It's putting in these string boundaries between each one of the parts. The server's getting this and it, it knows as it's reading through here, oh, okay, here's another one. This is where I end. So after Steve, 
that string. Here's a boundary. So I'm onto the next item. And then after this JSON file, I'm onto this one. After this JSON file, here's the end of it. So there we have it. And if we look, here's my multi-part form data boundary. They've used content type here. Content disposition is another one for this. Either one can be used. But if we leave it out, the browser will create this boundary for us and everything's good. All right, so I hope that helps you out. hope that helps you understand how to work with the files and upload them via Fetch. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.